Hello, everyone, and welcome to LinkedIn Live, Empower Your Career, Reskilling and Upskilling for Professional Growth. My name is Susan Sear, and I will be your host for today's session. I'm a VP in Global Service Operations at UKG, where we offer HR, payroll, and workforce management solutions to create great workplaces for our customers. Our purpose is people, so we're very excited to be here today to share some insights on reskilling and upskilling for professional growth. Keisha Jefferson and Mustafa Keba will be our panelists today. Keisha and Mustafa, did you want to introduce yourselves? We'll start with Keisha. Sure. Hi, Susan. Hi, everyone. I am Keisha Jefferson. I am a senior manager of talent acquisition here at UKG. I currently reside down in South Florida, but originally from the Metro Detroit area. And super excited to be here today. Thanks, Keisha, and thanks, Susan. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Mustafa. I'm Chief Security Officer here at UKG, and I am calling in from Western Florida. So it's fantastic and fun. As Susan said, our purpose is people here at UKG. Really excited to talk about this topic today. So, Susan, let's let's go. Okay. And before we get started, um, I'm actually live from Massachusetts, so not as warm as we're Keisha and Mustafa are from. Um, but for the audience, feel free to put your location in the chat and share where you're from. Um, and before we get started, some guidelines for our time together. As we move through the conversation, please feel free to put any questions into the chat. We'll come back to them throughout the discussion. So let's get started. So Mustafa, first question for you. How can professionals stay up to date with the latest trends and technologies in their field? Ooh. That's an interesting one. So I think one of the things that we need to think about is to continuously be growing and growth in, in this field, you have to stay up to date. You, you just have to. And I think that's the only way that you can get um, the speed. That's the way you can deliver. That's the way that you don't stay stagnant. So as a key role to really keep up with what's happening with technology, not only that, but also they have a professional way of thinking and what is next for you? How do you really elevate yourself into the new technologies that are coming into play? If you don't do that, th there's no way that you can continue to contribute as to the latest technologies that are coming in. If we look at the newest and the greatest technology like AI and so forth, it's nothing that you have to, it's it's something new. So you have to get additional skills to to, to, to make sure that you do that. The same thing we did with cloud, the same thing we did with data center in the past, the same thing with security capabilities. And so, so I think it's essential for everyone to learn new skills and continue growth as I do that on a daily basis. Okay, great. It is funny to think back to cloud and that was such a foreign concept and now it's just every day for us. It's exactly. Funny to think about how technology's progressed. Well, Keisha, well. coming from talent acquisition, how has the demand for specific skills evolved in today's job market? And why is reskilling and upskilling crucial for both individuals and organizations? And, and maybe even give us a definition of what we consider reskilling and upskilling. Yeah, that's a really great question. I think that it's important to understand that there is a slight difference between the two. Uh, upskilling is typically where you are looking to be better at what you're already doing. So I'm a talent acquisition partner and I want to evolve in that role. Um, that will prepare you for new challenges. It helps you become more proficient in one or more areas related to, to what you're currently doing. When it comes to reskilling, that more so involves learning new skills, new concepts, um, things that are going to allow you to do out, break out of what you're currently doing and do something completely different, essentially. Uh, that being said, the job market is rapidly evolving every day. So the increased demands for specialized skills are there. Um, there's a few things that we want to take into consideration when we're looking at um, reskilling and upskilling. So think about technological advancements, right? And how can we stay relevant in the workforce by learning new technologies and new skills? Um, there's career advancement opportunities. So by acquiring new skills, you're updating or updating your existing um, roles. Uh, people can really enhance their prospects when it comes to their career and potentially qualify for roles that they may not have even had experiences in before. Um, it also is future proofing. So when you constantly are growing and, and uh, 
challenging yourself professionally, it allows you to be more adaptable to changes in the job market in general. And then, you know, last but not least, thinking about your personal development and how you can transfer knowledge to others, um, whether it be by way of mentorship, guidance, providing feedback, those types of things. Um, so essentially, you know, reskilling, upskilling, there's a lot of added value for an individual, but there's also a lot of added value for organizations to invest in reskilling and upskilling for their employees as well. And can I add something on, on that, Susan? I think when you think about what, what Kisha is talking about in reskilling and upskilling, I'm in my job, I'm a network security person. I do that on a day to day basis. Cloud came into play and I decided not to learn how to do cloud infrastructure or cloud networking, right? That's, that's what we are talking about in terms of how do you teach yourself something? Well, what are you doing there? You're upskilling, you're learning something new, you're bringing something additional to what you do on a daily basis, right? Another technology come into play, you can jump on it and then you keep adding, right? But we love, other, other, we love other skills coming from communication or you're coming from a different team or you're coming from TA or support or wherever, but you want to jump into a new role. Now you're getting into something new, but you're changing the way that you are going to learn something new to allow you to get somewhere. But you do have foundation. Every foundation you bring into something new helps you actually get, get to where you need to be because I call it the way you think. And I think we do have a question like, you know, I've been upskilling. I did certs, I did things like that. So that's fantastic. What the one key thing that I say that's important is you have to have mentorship. You have to find people in the field that are doing so they can guide you to some of the things that you don't get on a certification or you don't get in school, but these are the real life experience, right? That could also help. I could get you to get the right answer of what you're looking for. Susan? Okay, great. And that question, David, that question or that answer from Mustafa was for you. Um, from Megan, what skills would you recommend someone looking to break into the tech field learn? Um, and there was a great blog post we had. Jennifer, I don't know if you can put that in the chat on five ways to break into tech, the technology field, I think. We discussed that last week. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it is getting out of your comfort zone, right? Learning something new is if, if you're just in your comfort zone and doing your thing and doing it well, that's great. But you, you can miss some opportunities for, for upskilling and taking that next step. Yeah. No, I agree. So then you wanna, um, the one thing there also is the, the way that you think to who you are as a person helps you get into the field, right? As I said, always use your mind to really help you get to the next level, right? If you're a good writer, you could be a security program writer, or you could be a technical writer in the technical field. If you're a police officer, you could be a good investigator or something. So that helps you to forensic, right? If you're a lawyer, you could be uh, risk management or compliance that can help you drive in. So that's the that's the way I think about it. If I'm thinking about getting into the field, in that. yeah, we always talk about telling your story. Work yourself into that story. How can you benefit the company that you're looking to to join? Yeah, and really focusing on on those transferable skills, right? So a lot of times we look at um, these industries as places that we may not be a fit for. Personally, I come from a background that was food and retail, and I saw the corporate world as this nice, shiny object that was so far away and, and out of my, my reach. And, you know, eight, nine years ago, there that was looking for the transferable skills that I had to be able to add to their team, to add value to their team. So it's also about, you know, understanding, I think Mustafa kind of touched on it, what, do you, what are your passions? Where is your desire? The tech industry is is so large and so vast. So really honing in on on what you want to uh, what you what you want to be involved with. Fantastic. That's great. We'll have to trade notes later. I actually have a twenty years of retail experience in the beginning of my career before oh. we break over to technology. So yes, trans. I'm all about transferable skills. So Mustafa, I know your team has done some really fun and creative learning events. Can you share some insights into how UKG creates and sustains a continuous learning culture? Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, I think when we talk about, you know, taking it to the next level, and I think, you know, we're doing it here in UKG and really thinking about 
skills, thinking about what's happening out there, right? So everyone is looking for uh, talented individual skills. Um, so what we, one of the things that we were looking at is, and I think everyone in the industry is doing, is building from within, right? Taking uh, different members uh, and then really training, upskilling or reskilling. Uh, Kisha and I in, 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 in a, um, inside UKG and ERG, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit, um, it, we've looked at individuals within UKG as well as um, members that wanted to learn something new. So we're going to create a program that allow each individual to actually showcase their talent. So this you don't have to be technically capable or so, but we'll have five or six programs and how do you get into security? So we took a security analyst, we took a dev dev secops, for example, development security and operations. Uh, we took other fields like risk management. And then we have mentors in each of that group work with different groups within UKG and really mentor them and then give them a program for a couple of weeks for them to actually take some certification, get direct mentorship from the practitioners and allow them to go do and research and come back and provide um, um, their thesis, what they've learned, or how you know, how, what do they think about the field? We think that's one of the key areas that drive people to really understand not just security or or engineering is just a one way, it, but it it's how do I get into it? The idea there is giving people the avenue to say, oh, I can get into this field in five or six or seven different ways. All right, and then we have some more fun things coming from the idea there is bringing it down choosing the best of the talent from there and then keep training and then repurposing that talent within the company. That allow us to actually have a talent pool to tap from, right? right? First, before going outside. And idea there also allowing other people to open their minds and see avenues into getting into the field in multiple facets of ways. And I'll talk, give it to, to Keisha to give a little bit of how we did it as well. Yeah, Keisha, do you want to talk a little about some of our employee resource groups that ERGs for UKG plays, um, they play a huge role in fostering a culture of learning and development. So how can organizations leverage them more effectively? There's a few ways, honestly. Um, I think that the ability to offer a space of community um, amongst peers and leaders, um, there is obviously knowledge sharing that takes place as well across the ERGs, um, networking, um, just sharing best practices in general. So, you know, Mustafa spoke about uh, a program that is taking place in one ERG, but here at UKG, we have, we have nine ERGs and they all have these streams that promote professional development, business impact, and those are opportunities for employees to really tap into those, those skills, right? Um, to try things that they haven't necessarily had the opportunity to try in their current role, which again, turns into transferable skills um, in, in roles that they would be upskilling or reskilling for. Um, organizations can really leverage ERGs multiple ways by being uh, making sure that the ERGs are aware of and knowledgeable of the company's initiatives and, and finding ways to connect with them on a regular basis. Um, facilitating cross-functional collaboration and, and making sure that they are, that they have a seat at the table or a voice in the room, essentially. Um, and having executive sponsors like uh, the amazing leaders that we have here has really helped the needle for our ear and the impact that they're making on employees, I would say. Yeah, I'm very active in the Women's Fire Up ERG, and we're pretty excited. We've got a new infusion of blood in some of our co-chairs and our executive sponsors, and just really looking forward to some of the collaboration um, and the intersectionality events that we do with some of the other ERGs, I think, are pretty exciting. So. I have a question in the chat from Pankaj. What introductory course can we do to add more value diligence to our workspace services side? My workspace. I'm not sure about workspace services. And I think when you talk about services, um, Susan, I think I'm not clear on the question. Can, can you, can you refer to the question? Yeah, uh, what 
Yeah, and Jen, I know you took the question, or Pankaj, if you're out there, maybe a couple more specifics in the chat can help us direct the answer. Yeah. I want to make sure I give you the right the, the right yeah. punch there. Um, one more thing I want to add into when you're thinking about risk scaling, there's two components that we typically will miss, or we call it technical, but it's it's really and very important. Soft skills. It's if I if you ask me what are the two things that you need to master for soft skills, that's number one. Communication is number two be able to actually do those things, I think you are really ahead. Find a mentor, it's the third one. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it gives some time here for Project to, to rewrite the question. But Susan, I'll give it back to you. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. And Keisha, I'm sure you see that all the time from a talent acquisition standpoint, right? It's such a key piece of sort of making it um, through those initial interviews, being able to communicate, clarify, be really clear in your objectives. Oh, hold on, another question in here. Um, from Mike, which, oh, my question is about soft skills. Whether it's an employee looking to grow or a candidate applicant trying to obtain a new position, it appears there is little to no focus from the employer looking at soft skills. I feel the term soft skills downplays their importance. What are your opinions on soft skills in terms of personal growth? I actually think it's huge. Um, and this is answered to Mike out there. Um, surprised that you're actually feeling an employee, employer not thinking it's important. I think it's a key part of the, the recruiting and interview experience. But Keisha, do you want to add anything to that as far as our experience? Absolutely. So when, again, when we think about reskilling or, or upskilling, the soft skills are going to us to understand what potential is there. What what career trajectory are, are you, what path are you on for your career trajectory? So while to be technically acumen is important to do certain roles just because of the level that the team may be looking for your ability to like Mustafa said communicate effectively your ability to um, partner with individuals at multiple levels of the organization um, you know do you have high emotional intelligence to understand different situations that you may be up against so there are there are multiple way that soft skills sometimes will outweigh the technical act uh, because again it shows potential and, and there are a lot of hiring managers that are willing to work with um, passion and and growth potential versus someone that is super technically skilled but has no soft skills quite frankly is this someone that I would I would want to, to work with and I can see growing in the company or adding value in the company long term? That is that's a great point. Mustafa, in the age of digital transformation, how can technology be leveraged to enhance upskilling and reskilling initiatives? And maybe that's what that other question was getting to from Punkage. Uh, I, I you know I, I think it's one of the best thing ever, right? Um, if I don't know a particular topic, I'll jump on online and ask. Uh, chat GPT or something, it may not give me the right answer. But what I'm trying to say is, right, <laughs> uh, you know, you can learn anything today online, um, any topic, any, 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 any skill, um, the amount of contents in YouTube, the amount of contents online on LinkedIn, it's huge, right? You can learn programming online. It's the same amount of content as any university out there if you know what you're looking for. So I, I think that's key to, 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 to all our success because you can, you can learn all of the things that we're talking about, both technically as well as examples of things that are happening, demos, there's a lot of those. But more importantly, and I think it allows us to, to make our lives easier by, by creating, uh, we've seen the latest technology that came out in the, you know, uh, uh, in in past year, ChatGPT or Google Bird or all of these things that are coming in, and even um, AI in cars as well as automobile, like right? they're changing the way we do things, making life easy for us. The simple things in yourself, in your phone, that helps you, um, the, the 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 text that helps you rewrite your text for whatever reason, that changes the way we operate because now you're more efficient and you're more effective in what you do. More importantly, the technology is available, right? It, it is not super expensive. And I think some of, most of them are actually free. So I think that is really key 
to just knowing the questions to ask and having the right help with the technology available out there, you can actually drive this and get to where you need to be. So I'm gonna just add one more thing when you say know to ask the right questions. Curiosity is such a big piece of this journey. Um, and you can take the course, check the box and off you go. But really like asking the questions, why are you doing it? How will the end user use it? Um, I think it's connecting all those dots is just as important as learning a skill. No, absolutely, absolutely. And I think when you are delivering, if you are able to deliver a product, I think understanding the usability of the product is key to how that's going to work. But if you're learning how to actually build that product, is asking the right question, what type of skills do I need to learn to actually get to where I need to be? And I think you can take a certification, it teaches you core foundations and fundamentals of how to do things. But what are the key things that I really need to master to be able to get there and get a good interview and get Kisha put you in front of us to talk to you? It's going to require that soft skill because you have to be able to communicate and say, here are the things that I know, here are the things that I were able to learn at this point, here are the people that I collaborated, including my mentor that allowed me. So that tells us that you know how to do good research because that's an important part of learning. Right. Keisha, how can organizations ensure high levels of employee engagement and upskilling programs? And they can put them out there and offer them, but unless the employees are actually engaging in them, what's the best practice here? Yeah. So again, going back to you know the ERGs, we have communities within our companies that will help us move the needle forward. So you know, involve the employees in the design and planning processes. Ask them, what do you need? what will help you be engaged. Um, tailor the learning experiences to their employees and other and individuals, I should say, um, their interests and their career goals. Where do you wanna go in the future? Do you have an upward trajectory that you're looking to do? Are you looking to make an impact across uh, your, um, your, uh, your, your roles? Um, really digging into behaviors and competencies and um, allowing the employees to strengthen those by way of projects, uh, programs, and also providing opportunities for career learning and, and collaboration. We, uh, at one point we had something that was called gigs um, there's also opportunities to shadow individuals in roles that you may have an interest in because sometimes you don't really know what is required and what is a part of the job until you actually get a chance to experience it yourself. So the mentorship piece is a part of it, but the other part is also allowing real time um, practice and, and work for those employees. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the audience or Keisha, Mustafa, any other thoughts you want to add before we wrap this up? I, I think it's just really important to understand where your where your gaps are, those skills gaps, and, and being honest with yourself and saying, I really want to be, I don't know, a future CEO, but I have a hard time speaking in public taking that on and understanding that there are resources, people that will help you along the way, but also being open to feedback um, and making the, the changes that you need to. I also think that tapping into your development goals, your personal development goals, and really aligning those to um, where you wanna upskill and reskill and, and continuing to measure your progress on a regular basis. Fantastic. I think, yeah, Kisha, that's a good point. I think one of the things that I just want to add, sometimes I understand that we don't know what we want to do. I, I get, I think that's a good point. Sometimes we just don't know. We don't understand how to get there. So I, I, the only thing that I will say is find, find people in the field. Everybody in technical field typically would want to share how they learn, how they get to where they are today. And find one or two that allow you that you can that you can ask questions, you can you can bounce ideas, and they can provide context. Research training, research learning, um, being able to do research really well is a key important piece of this. 
Um, uh, curiosity is definitely one because looking around to find the right, um, right, right context. Of course, education and, and certificate is always foundation, but I think it's not the only way. There's very there's a lot of avenues out there, and in and, and a lot of networking. Uh, do networking; it's key to success as well in many areas because the more people you know, and then share. The last thing I will share: share your ideas. Talk about what you want to do. Somebody will hear, and then who knows? You might get um, uh, someone will reach out to you. Uh, that's the that's the that's the key things that I wanted to share. Uh, unless you have any more questions, I have a couple questions out there from Sarah. How do I bring it up to my manager that I'm looking to shadow other roles, switch departments, etc.? Um, I think it's an open, honest conversation with your manager as part of your own taking charge of your own employee development. Um, so I think you should absolutely feel that you can do that. Um, you know, keep it general as you're trying to figure out and explore what you want to do next. I don't know if you've got anything from a talent acquisition. I, I agree 1000%. I also find that sometimes our leaders can be our best source of determining which path to go and who to actually connect with. Um, there are times where, you know, if I'm working with someone, I can say, employee X, I think that this person would be a great mentor for you based on what I've seen them um, um, express in the past. So, so I definitely think that having conversations often with your leader is going to be important for your, your upskilling and reskilling. And I'll take one more, Keisha, I'm going to toss this one to you as well um, from Ed, for because I think this is a big one out there. For mm -hmm. seasoned workers looking to make a career change, what advice would you give when job postings typically require X number of years working in that field when you can't necessarily show that? Any tips from a talent acquisition perspective? Yeah, so that that can be uh, challenging sometimes. I would I would definitely um, understand that question. So essentially, when you see job descriptions, the minimum years of require years of experience requirement is is going to be the minimum. However, again, there are leaders that are open to transferable experiences. So being able to really tell your story by way of your resume is going to be important. That is, you know, where Mustafa was talking about AI, chat GPT, utilizing those platforms as a prompt to say, I am X individual that's looking to transition into this industry, help me to frame up my resume so that it tells that story in a, in a positive way. Um, also, don't be afraid to make connections uh, with people on LinkedIn that are in similar roles to what you are applying for so that you can understand what their career path has looked like because there are opportunities for them to say, hey, I know this position says X amount of years, but because you have this certification and you've used this tool in the past, that will um, help quantify the overall experience. So. Don't be afraid to apply, even if it does have those years of experience on there, because there might be additional experiences that you can bring to the table. Okay. So I'm going to wrap up now. There's a couple of questions we're just not going to get to, but I do have a link. We can go back in and answer those questions. Um, also, look for a link to the blog from this post. Um, and thank you so much all for attending, your attention, your questions. And thank you to my wonderful panelists, Mustafa and Keisha. Thank you. Um, everyone have a great afternoon. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you for joining. Thanks. Thanks.